Hey guys, this is Maximum Scar here with some more Project uh, Seacat. We're gonna today we're gonna do something a bit different. Um, so it's been all conceptual so far, all this weird flowcharts and stuff. I thought I'd get into some actual coding. So today we're going to design the API. So this is the API that applications are going to use to communicate with the CCAT AI. Um, so this is mostly going to be writing interfaces in C Sharp, but that's fine. Um, needs to be done. I find that quite interesting. Um, you guys might not, but whatever. Um, there'll also be a little bit of source control. Um, so this is the TFS source control for keeping your code nice and neat. I'm going to cover that a little bit <clears throat> um, just in the process of doing what I'm doing. So uh, yeah, let's hop right into it. We're going to start off by opening Visual Studio, everyone's favorite IDE. Uh, don't know what IDE stands for. And you see here we've got this Team Explorer. So if we didn't have that Team Explorer for some reason, we could go to View, Team Explorer. No big deal. Um, then it would appear. So in here, the first thing we need to do is connect to our TFS server, which is where we've been doing the planning of the code. We've been doing it here, right? This is the Project CCAT. Uh, TFS project, team services. TFS is what they use under the hood. Um, I think team services is the online hosted version. Uh, it doesn't matter. So in here you can see if I go to the code section, we don't actually have any code currently. The whole thing is empty. There's no items. But that's fine because we haven't done any work. Um, if we go into work, you can see I've been very lazy with setting up this stuff. Um, I've got a bit of stuff to do with memory in my features. Uh, I need to add some more stuff, but I've just been making videos, what can I say? But in here, we've got two things we need to do. We need to create the database and we need to create the .NET solution. So we're not gonna worry about the database just yet. That's another episode entirely. We're gonna focus on this one. We're going to create the .NET solution. So in good practice, I am going to, this is what you meant to do. I'm going to, uh, how do I update the region? Yes, I update the state. So it is currently active, right? We are currently working on this. Now, you could argue this is pointless, but I like it because it lets me see what I'm focusing on and what I should be focusing on. Um, it's very useful. But anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're going to create the .NET solution. So as part of that, we're going to add a... Do we want to add a task? We don't really need for that. It's pretty basic. We won't bother. We'll cover tasks later. But now we need to, from within Visual Studio, we need to hook up to this TFS server so that we can upload code to the code section. So what we need to do here is in Team Explorer, there's this little button here, Manage Connections. And if you click that, you can see this comes up. And currently there's no connections because we don't have a hosted service provider. Uh, so this is where you could create your TFS account if you don't have one or your team services account. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in to my account. Whatever, I'm not giving you... Whatever. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to sign in here. Come on. So... <clears throat> Once we sign in here, which shouldn't take too long, we should see here the Project CCAT should appear. We may need to connect. Boom. So now we can pick this one because it's part of my Maximum Scarf um, Visual Studio Online account. And we can pick Project CCAT because that's the one we're interested in. And we can hit Connect. And now you see we've connected to Visual Studio Team Services, the CCAT project. And we can go into My Work. And you can see which work items are assigned to us. And you can see here, Create .NET Solution. That's the one we just set to active. So now that it's set to active, it's available to us. 
you can filter this, but we're on the current iteration. I've only got one iteration currently. I've been uh, slacking on my TFS stuff, but that's fine. We don't need to worry about this yet. It has a lot of nice stuff to do with code reviews, but if you're working on your own project, you're probably not going to be doing code reviews. I'm certainly not. Uh, that's more of a workplace thing or a thing where you've got teams working together. This is purely me at the moment. Uh, we can also go to pending changes and here any change we make to the source code will appear here and we will be able to upload it to our team services account which will send it over here to the code section. Right. So any changes from here we can check them in, that's what this button's for, we can check in these code changes and they will appear in here. And then we can download them from any other computer or you can send them off to a build server, you can do what you want with them, but that's getting them in a centralized location, that's basically what source control is. Um, there's more to it, but I'm not going to go into that just yet, this is only a little bit of source control. So, first thing we need to do is we need to create a solution. We're going to use the Max Scarf workspace, which is like my default workspace, because you can have multiple copies of the code base on your computer, and that's what a workspace is. So Max Scarf is like my default one. But if I wanted to work on two different things at once, I could have two different workspaces, and then you could only you could apply the changes from one workspace to the other by uploading the source code to Visual Studio Online and then downloading it in your other workspace. So it's like basically having two computers working on the same thing at the same time. Uh, but you can do it on one computer. That's what a workspace is. So in this workspace, we haven't found any solutions. We wouldn't expect to because we're about to make one. So if I go new, we can make our new solution. So I'm going to make it be a C-sharp class library because this is our API, and APIs generally are just a class library. Um, not always, usually. So we're going to call this ccat.api. Do we want just ccat.api? I think for now that's fine. I think we're okay with that. It's uh, You can go totally mental splitting this up into multiple different projects for all the different parts, but for now we'll keep it simple, right? We'll just put it CCAT API. I might want to do portable uh, just because you can use that on Windows Phone, but for now I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to do CCAT API. We can probably use a regular DLL anyway, otherwise that would be stupid. And we're going to call the solution CCAT API as well, because why not, right? Why the hell not? So if we hit OK on that, that should create our solution. Here we go. So if I go to my pending changes, you will see it's added the solution into here, right? And if I go to my workspaces, which I've created a shortcut for on my desktop, you can see this is my workspace for the CCAT API. And you can see it's added a solution with nothing in it. So literally this solution is there and this is saying we can add it, we can check it in if we want. We don't want to yet uh, because we've got this class 1 that we don't really want. So we're going to undo that. We don't really want, well actually no that's not where we're going to do it. We'll do it the right way. We're going to delete it from here. Because if we delete it from here, it does all that for us. Whereas if we do it from here, doesn't update the solution file and you end up with missing files and stuff so it's best to delete stuff from within here if you can uh, within solution explorer because solution explorer is tied to team explorer and team explorer will update with everything you do in solution explorer so it's it's nice like that it keeps it keeps it simple so we could check this in right now um, it doesn't really do much we can build it which does literally nothing. I mean, it gives us, what, an empty debug DLL. Uh, not the most useful of things. We could check it in, though, because it is doing what the, what the user story recommends. But the first thing we will do as well is we will add 
another project because we're going to do this right. We're going to make a unit test project called CCAT API test. Do I want test.unit? Because you might have test.integration later on. Yes, I do. Test.unit. Okay. And here we have our unit test project. Uh, unit tests are great. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on them. I may do a video in the future if anyone's interested, but basically they are code for testing your code. Um, I won't be writing any in this episode, but I want to get the project in there just because it's good habit, you know. If you're creating a solution, you might as well get the projects in there if you're going to use them. Keep it all, keep it all tidy. And, I mean, that's about it for creating the database project. So, we can go to Team Explorer. You can see it's got both of our projects here. We can... We can actually, you see here, add work item by ID. So what we can do here is if I go back to team services and I come into here, you can see, this is the wrong one, you can see that number 10 is create.net solution, right? So if I come back here and I put 10 in here, you will see it's added my create.net solution, right? So when I submit this code up to team services, it will tag that change set. That's what a, basically a, a collection of code that you're passing up to the server is. It's called a change set. It will map that to the user story in TFS. And you'll, you'll see what I mean by that. But for now, we'll create a checking comment. This one's going to be added CCAT API solution. Uh, this change set adds the CCAT API solution along with a CCAT API project and a unit test project to go along with it. Right? Testing done. You don't have to do this, this is just a force of habit for me. <clears throat> I think it's a good practice to get into. This comment is basically, again, when you upload the changes, they will have a comment assigned to them. You'll see what I mean, but it makes it easier to track where your changes have come from in your code base. So, testing done, I built the solution, and I that's all I did, really. So that's that, right? Now, normally, what you would do is you wouldn't just check this in. You would do actions, and you would request a review, right? And then you could enter the name of the reviewer. I don't know if I can add myself as a reviewer. <clears throat> I can. Okay, I'll do that very briefly. So I can add myself as a reviewer. I can... Maybe I should code review my own stuff. Maybe. I do that in work. I can submit the request, right? Yes, let's save those. So that is now sent out, and you can see that here I have a code review request. And if I open this, you can see this is a review. And it should let me well it's kind of weird because i'm the reviewer um and i'm also the guy who created it so you know what forget it but basically i can review it myself you can click through here and you can see what's called the change set it won't be apparent in this one because everything is new but with a change set it will show you everything that has changed in this change set, specifically within the file. You'll see it in the next one, uh, possibly. Yeah, you will. So for now, we're just gonna close the review. It's complete, we, no big deal. We're not 
actually trying to review too much shit. And then we can go back to pending changes. You can see it's tagged the code review as a work item. And we can check that in. Boom. Done. So that's change set 9 because there's a bunch of change sets that uh, Visual Studio does for you. It's really annoying. But you can see change set 9 has been checked in. It's got my comment. It's got the related work items. And it's got all the changes. Pretty neat, right? So now I can go up to features. And if I go into this one, you can see it has a link. And it should have. So I think because I didn't assign it to a task and I only assigned it to a user story, it hasn't linked it. Usually it would link a change set to a task. Uh, so here I will have to manually add that link. Uh, but that's fine. If I was linking it to tasks, it would it would do it all for me. Uh, it's no biggie. We can just do this. Okay. And there you go. <clears throat> Wait, did I just have to refresh? I did. I just had to have a bit of patience and give it the time to do it. It did it for me, you see? And it set it to resolved. So it did that automatically. So at this point, you would be able to send that off to your test team. And they would be able to test that code. And then when they were happy that the code was complete and the business owners were happy it was complete, it could be marked to closed. Now, I am mostly happy it's complete, but we're going we're gonna to do a little test just to verify. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new workspace. That is not what I wanted. We're going to create a new workspace. So we have the Max Scarf workspace. We're going to add um, uh, workspace to, right? So the source control folder is, we just want it on CCAP, same as the other workspace. And our local folder, we want to be, let's see, where did it save this stuff? Sources. Yeah, source, workspaces, and we can make a new folder here called workspace2. Okay. Okay. E no. I'm going to edit this one just to verify something. Okay, good. Right. So now, what we can do is we can switch our workspace. But our new workspace, workspace 2, doesn't have anything in it, right? It's totally clean because we haven't linked it up to the change that we uploaded from the other workspace. So this one has the project, and that's great. But we need workspace 2 to have it. We don't really, but this is just our test to make sure it's all fine. So what we can do is we can go to the Source Control Explorer. And this, this view here is directly mapped to this view here. So it's literally where your code is in the, um, in the repository. And you can see that in Workspace Max Scarf, We've got it all, right? It's all downloaded. You can tell because it's it's highlighted. It's white. But if we switch workspace to workspace 2, you'll see it's all grayed out because we haven't downloaded it from the repo. So what we can do is we can right-click and we can do Get Latest Version. And that will, boom, download the latest version. And you can see workspace 2 now has the solution, right? And we can open it here. You see it's appeared in our solution list. So we can open that solution, and we are now, or we should be, in the Workspace 2 version. So if I build this in debug, and I'll build it in release as well, just for good measure, 
and then I go back to our workspace and I go into here, into the bin, you can see it's built. So we know that our check-in was totally legit. We know it worked, right? Because we can pull down the solution and we can build it with no problems. So that means that this task here, create.NET solution, we can mark as closed because we've done it, right? It has passed its acceptance tests. Didn't have any acceptance tests, but I consider that our acceptance test. And it's passed. So now that one is done. Now this setup feature should really be in progress. I'm just being lazy. Um, let's activate that. So now the only one we've got left to do is create database. <coughs> so we'll do that quickly. Um, the title of this video is going to be very misleading. We haven't actually ended up creating an API at all, but we have done a lot of source control and that's what we were talking about. Next video, I'll actually add the API. Um, I think that's fair. <clears throat> I don't like having hype people up. So I doubt anyone's hype, let's be honest. What am I going to do now? I am going to, yes, we're going to add the database project. So from here in the solution, we can go add new project and this time we want it to be a we don't want visual c sharp we want other project types sql server so we want a sql server database project and we're going to call this ccat uh, it's not going to be a very original name ccat.db database i'm going to do database everyone does db i'm doing database screw it i like the word and here we go. This should not take long. It shouldn't be adding anything really. Uh, no like default files or anything I imagine. Maybe it will. I don't really know what I'm talking about. No it didn't. So now we have the database. We can actually deploy that database into here if we really want. So here is a test. What we'll do is we'll add a God, what should we add? What should we add to verify this works? For now, let's add a table, right? And we'll just call it the test table. I don't really care. We'll delete the table again. It's, it's all good. But for now, we'll call it <clears throat> test. That's all it's being called, test, right? And it has an int, which is an ID. That's fine. This isn't supposed to be a SQL Server video. So now if we rebuild the solution, we can right click on that and we can do publish and we can publish this or we should be able to publish this to our local SQL server which I cannot remember what it's called I think it's just called max scar is that right yeah so max scar yeah, I remember the password. Why not? Live a little. Okay, whatever. So we want to publish this. It's going to try. It might fail. I feel like I missed a setting. You never know. It has taken a while. That usually means it's failed. Oh no, it completed. Happy days. So now if I go into my database, we can go in here, we can see CCAT database has appeared. CCAT is one that I made ages ago. I wouldn't worry about that, I'll just delete it. Yeah, 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 go away. CCAT database, we have in here, we have our test table. See that? And our test table has da, 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 an ID, which is an int. So it's all working fine. We've verified that. We now have our database technically. Now, you could argue it shouldn't actually be in this solution. Um, you definitely could argue that because it's not part of the API. So you know what? I'm going to undo these changes. But this is where you will see the joy of it, right? This I can pretend this was intentional. Because now it's like, oh, that's annoying. It's got all these changes. What am I going to do? I'm going to have to go through and delete them, and maybe it's you know going to be a hassle. All we have to do here is do undo. 
boom. Yes to all. And there you have it. Uh, it's gone. Now, I have noticed that I've named this wrong, so I'm going to rename this. This can be our second change set of the day where you can see changes taking place, I guess. Can't believe I typoed this. That's terrible. That is terrible. I refuse to accept that. That is not something that I am okay with. Not in a million years. Not on my watch. I may be missing a few of these. I don't care. That's enough for me. Let's create our second check-in. So you can see here, now in our pending changes, we can see it's not ads because everything's been added already. This is just updates. And so what you can do with an update is you can right click and you can do compare with latest version. And that will show you, this is actually really interesting. It will show you what has changed since the last version. So you see here, it's changed this capital E into a small e. And it, it acknowledges that and you can see the changes here. So you can say, yeah, okay, that's a fine change. And that is where the code review comes in handy. So this one's been renamed, but it's also been changed. So if I go in here, you can see CCAT uh, has been changed there as well. It may exist somewhere else in this file, so I'm actually going to look around. CCAT? No, that's wrong. And then this one, again, you will see this one actually hasn't changed. So sometimes it adds files that haven't changed, but it has been renamed. So that's fine. And then this one is, uh, again, not changed, but it should be changed. Is this because I haven't saved all? Maybe. Yeah. So you have to do save all, uh, otherwise your solution doesn't save. Your solution will only save when you, I think it saves when you build, maybe. I just hit save all every so often anyway. Uh, it's good, good practice. So here we're gonna do fixing typo in ccatapi.test.unit name. We didn't do any testing. I'm gonna slack off on that very quickly. I'm not going to assign it to anything we could do, but whatever, it's a minor change. Nobody nobody cares. Even I don't care. So we'll check that in. Boom. Now, if I go back to my original workspace and I open the solution, you will see it's still got the typo because I haven't transferred the changes to my new workspace yet. So this is my old workspace. I could still be working in this and not want the changes from my other workspace yet. But because I do, I'm gonna go back to the Source Control Explorer and I'm gonna do get latest version. Because if I view the history, we're here, right? We're number nine. We added the CCAT API solution, blah, blah, blah. We want this one, fixing typo. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do get latest version. And it's gonna say, everything is up to date because I'm in workspace two not max graph. So now I'm in max graph, I can do get latest version and it will update that. Is that not nice? Is that not slick? Is that not an amazing way to develop code? I certainly think it is. Um, now I am debating whether I should do more in this video uh, because I did say I was going to design the API. But you know what? Screw you guys. I think, for now, this is a totally reasonable video. I think it, it doesn't cover much, but who says this stuff has to cover much? So uh, until next time, catch you later, guys.